Space Week kicking off full force in Tel Aviv and this year's theme, Earth and Space Becoming One. This year's focus is on interactions between the growing activity in space and the transformation in lives on Earth. Among those in attendance, representatives from NASA, the Israeli Space Agency, and delegates from space programs around the world. There's a lot up for discussion here at Space Week in Tel Aviv. A return to the moon, the Artemis missions, missile defense, climate change, and a continued effort to send humans farther than they've ever gone before. The return to the moon on NASA's Artemis mission in November of 2022 will pave the way for the mission in 2025. There, NASA hopes to land the first woman and the first person of color on the moon, using innovative technologies to explore more of the lunar surface than ever before. Artemis 1 mission that we just accomplished took the um, Orion spacecraft, which is a human-rated spacecraft, farther than any human-rated spacecraft has gone beyond the moon. Right, And what we're going to do with Artemis 2 when we fly humans is test out that spacecraft even more with the life support systems and, again, go beyond any distance that we've ever gone with humans before. The point of this mission is clear, to learn on and around the moon and to take the next giant leap, sending the first astronauts to Mars. And this is where collaboration with international partners comes into play. Like this Israeli startup called STEMRAD. The company provides personal protective equipment for astronauts to wear beyond low Earth orbit that reduces radiation exposure. On Artemis 1, there were two mannequins, one named Helga and the other one named Zohar. They both are made of materials that uh, mimic the tissue of a human body. And into each of the, those uh, mannequins, there were thousands of uh, sensors, radiation sensors implanted into the body. While Helga was unprotected, uh, Zohar was protected with the vest. And by comparing the doses that each doll observed, we can tell the protective level of the, of the vest. Even the top heads at NASA say international cooperation is critical for future space exploration. The European service module is actually in line. It's in our critical path that sits right below the crew module. Um, we have the Europeans working with us uh, on our gateway program. We, of course, flew the Israeli-German uh, experiment with the uh, radiation vests on Artemis 1. We expect a lot of that to continue uh, going forward, but it's essential because we, we went to the moon with Apollo, and we did that on our own. We, we can't do that this time. Number one, it's just not practical. Number two is we should go and explore as human beings, not as from any specific country. And here in Israel, the space agency continues to promote Israeli interest in space and push for its international position. But none of that can be done without cooperation with NASA. We need to cooperate as much as we can with NASA. For example, on the Bereshit, on the Bereshit, which is going to be the, the second attempt of Israel technology to reach to the moon, NASA will cooperate with the Space IL entity. So we do see and we do seek to find as many possible possibilities to cooperate with NASA as we can. Global space partners say a return to the moon means scientific discovery, economic benefit, and even paves the way for a new generation of explorers. Hamdas Alhout, I-24 News in Tel Aviv.